Taylor again and we are today going to look at the Meiji Restoration or the Reformation, Renovation and in Japanese it is called Meiji Shin. So, the introduction. Basically, throughout the course of the revolution, the power switched from the shogun Tokugawa Yoshinobu of Tokugawa Shogunate to the emperor, or more specifically, Emperor Meiji. This revolution, as you may have guessed, happened in Japan. And here are some of the key places or prefectures where there were clans. It was called Han. So in this revolution, the Satsuma Han, the Choshu Han, and the Tokugawa Shogunate were involved. First, before we take a look at the actual revolution, I want to introduce some background situations to keep in mind. So the first background situation is the policy of isolation. This started in 1633, approximately 200 years before the revolution. Before the policy of isolation, there were a few things the government, Tokugawa Shogunate, didn't like. One of them was the spread of Christianity in Japan. People from Christian countries were coming to Japan on ships, and some of them had the role of spreading Christianity. As these were quite successful, some Japanese people were becoming Christians. In response to this, the Tokugawa Shogunate developed a test to see whether a person was Christian or not. They had a metal plate with Jesus Christ carved on it. They made people step on the plate, and if they couldn't step on it because the plate was too sacred, it would be confirmed that the person is a Christian and he or she will be punished. The second thing the Tokugawa Shogunate didn't like was the laws of daimyo's becoming richer. The reason to why the laws were becoming richer is that people from other countries were coming to Japan and they started trading. With both of these situations, the Tokugawa Shogunate closed all ports, therefore the policy of isolation. However, Port Uraga and Nagasaki were remained open so that the Tokugawa Shogunate could get some interest. Fast forwarding about 200 years, another background situation is the Opium Wars which happened in China. It was an Anglo-Chinese war caused by the British illegally exporting an addictive drug, opium, to China and the Chinese government trying to force stop the opium trade, as well as the incident where a Chinese villager got killed by a drunk British man. These tensions resulted in the war. China lost and Hong Kong got occupied. Then, in 1853, there was the Perry Expedition. It was where black ships from the United States of America came to Port Uraga, one of the only two ports that were open, with the order of the president at the time, Millard Fillmore, the goal being to ask Japan to open these ports. The main person on the ship was Commodore Matthew Perry. There were several attempts before asking Japan to open the ports, but none of them have been particularly successful. This time, Perry had a letter from the president, and he kind of forced Japan to open ports like, open ports or we will bomb you. Yeah. Then finally, the Tokugawa Shogunate opened ports, because they didn't want to get bombed. Um, however, after opening ports, there was the convention of Kanagawa, which is a disadvantage for Japan as it was very unfair. First, if a US ship were to come, Japan had to supply them with resources, which were paid from Japanese taxes. Second, Japan wasn't allowed to decide tax for imported products, so the US exported things like cotton and thread with almost no tax. Because of this, Japanese products weren't bought as much and some manufacturers panicked. And finally, Japan exported some tea and silkworm to the United States. The stock of these pro uh, products went down, resulting in the price of them to go up. Anyway, those were pretty much all the background situations we need to know about. Now, just one more thing before we take a look at the events of the revolution. Let's talk about the feature of the revolution. Here's a feudal pyramid of Japan before the revolution. Usually, when this kind of revolution happens, uh, it's an uprising from the lowest class towards the higher class. 
has a lower cost may be treated unfairly. So in this case, it will be the common people who are battling against the typical shogunate. However, in this revolution, it was more about the knights or the samurais, as the common people didn't really know a lot about what was going on in their country at the time. Anyway, the samurais were trying to expel the people from other countries. However, the Tokugawa shogunate was already having relationships with other countries, and they were trying to continue an unfair relationship as well, such as the Convention of Kanagawa. This made the samurais concerned that Japan might get occupied like in China with the opium war. Thus, in this revolution, the Tokugawa shogunate is overthrown and the emperor comes into power. Now, the people involved in the revolution can be split into two groups, those who wanted to collapse the Tokugawa shogunate and those who were in the Tokugawa shogunate or supporting the Tokugawa shogunate. We'll meet them all later on, but first we'll look at these two, Katsu Kaishu and Ito Hirobori. They both studied the boat, Katsu Kaishu from the Tokugawa shogunate side and Ito Hirobumi from the side which wanted to collapse the Tokugawa shogunate. First, we will look at Katsu Kaishu's trip to San Francisco. Katsu Kaishu went on a ship called the Kanagi Maru to San Francisco. He was very surprised at how developed the US cities was. For example, cities as he knew it looked like this. This is Edo, the capital city of Japan at the time, with only a couple of small houses. Now this is San Francisco. There are factories and also, unlike Japan, there was already democracy. Here, you can see the election result of 1860. Furthermore, capitalism had led to development and things like transportation, as you can see on the map where that compares transportation in 1930 with that of 1960. There were even railroads in the US, while in Japan, people still used horses and cows to travel around. The second person we will look at that also studied the boat is Ito Hirobori, one of the people from Choshu 5 who wanted to collapse the Tokugawa shogunate. He went to London University in 1863 in a ship that looked like this. On the ship, he was asked what he wanted to study. He wanted to say navy as in naval size, but his pronunciation sounded like navy, so he needed to practice some navigation all the way to London. <laughs> anyway, he was also surprised in, uh, in London. There were steam engines, factories, museums, banks, and buildings. So after both of them came back to Japan, what did they learn and think? Well, they now decided that expelling other countries might not have been the way forward. Instead, they came up with a new approach. They felt the need to make a modern Japan by learning technology and social systems from other countries. They thought that with modern Japan, they could have a fair relationship with other countries instead of unfair ones like the Convention of Kanagawa. Anyway, um, so that was uh, this part one of the Meiji Restoration. Um, please watch part two by clicking over here uh, to uh, we'll look at the rest of the revolution. Bye.